Finally, we are going to look at the 10 lessons for level five, which is Klesa. Klesa in Gaelic means uh, tricks or feats. It can even mean sports. The word has a wide range of connotations in the Scottish Gaelic language. Uh, it's a very ancient word. It's found in the Ulster cycle of Irish legend to describe the special martial tricks of the uh, heroes. Um, it's a word that's also used in Scottish Gaelic to refer to the powers of magic. When you say somebody has blue class, it means they have magic powers. So, um, and it can also refer to things like juggling. So it's a word with a lot of connotations. The 10 lessons of our Klesa curriculum are what are referred to in the Gaelic language as Klesica Cleave, which just means sword tricks. So they are uh, tricks that show your superior prowess as a swordsman, ideally, uh, and as such they go kind of beyond what's strictly necessary to win a bout. In fact, you can, you can use them to win the bout without killing the opponent. Um, and that's what a lot of the old Gaelic legends show really expert swordsmen doing when they're fighting an opponent that's well below their own skill level. They'll win by doing one of these things and then ask him if he's had enough and give him a chance to go on living. So, we're going to look at and lessons where uh, you try out that concept. First uh, class that you're going to try is called the restraint stroke. And what it means is that you make a full power attack and you stop without, you stop just short without harming the opponent. For this reason, because you actually are supposed to be hitting with some force. At least the antagonist needs to be wearing a mask when you're practicing these lessons. Because naturally, if you're practicing hitting as hard as you can and not hitting the other guy, until you get really good at it, you are going to unintentionally hit the other guy, so make sure he's wearing a mask. So, we're going to use the old-style footwork for these lessons. There isn't any reason it wouldn't work just as well with the regimental footwork. We're going to use the old-style footwork. In the hanging guard, he goes to cut my leg. And I shift back and avoid it, bring my cut down so that it, I try to make that cut with, with some real speed and with some real power behind it and to land without any impact. And then you say, have you had enough? Some of the legends actually show the uh, hero doing that several times and then the other guy eventually gets the point. I think uh, in reality once is enough. If he keeps pushing you after that, it's probably time to finish him off. But. So that's restraint stroke number one. That's the first lesson of the sword tricks. Restraint stroke number two, we're in an outside guard. He cuts one. And I'm gonna make cut four, and again, try to hit as hard as you can, but land on him without any power. Without cutting him if the weapons were sharp. Restraint stroke three, we're in the inside guard. He cuts two. And what you really want to work towards is getting as close as you possibly can without actually hitting him. And if you do land on him at all, you want to land as light as a feather. Those are the three restraint strokes. You can actually do those with any cutting angle. The point is just it's the restraint stroke. You show restraint, you don't actually land the hit. You give him a chance. Now the next one we're going to look at is the precision stroke. It takes the concept of the restraint stroke and takes it a little bit further. You're aiming for some tiny target on his face or, or on his clothing, or on his body or on his clothing. Sometimes they'll say, oh, he cut a button off the other guy's coat, just like in Romeo and Juliet, there's a reference to swordsmen doing things like that. Uh, Sometimes it's a little more personal. You take off his ear, or you take off his nose, anything that's not fatal, and then you ask him if he's had enough. But the point is, it's a tiny little target. So you pick your tiny little target for yourself. What I'm gonna go for, and that doesn't mean I'm gonna get it, it's not easy, 
is the little rivet right on the top of his fencing mask. We'll see if I can land on that. So we go to the hanging guard. He's going to attack my leg. And there's my sword right over the little rivet. That's not perfect because ideally I would want to land in such a way that I could actually cut right on the rivet and I was actually just slightly off. But this is something to continuously work on and refine and try to get it better and better. He goes for the leg cut. Now, it can be any specific little target you want. Let's say I decided I wanted to take just the whiskers of his beard off. I'm going to aim right there. Okay, this is not a matter of uh, perfecting this skill. Unless you were actually able with a sharp sword to do something like take somebody's beard whiskers off without hitting him, which you are absolutely not to attempt. <laughs> Unless you can do that, you can't consider this skill perfected. It's just something to keep refining and refining. So that's uh, precision stroke number one. Precision stroke number two, same concept. He goes to make cut one. I'm going to parry and I'm going to make a return cut over here and I'm just going to pick some tiny little target and try to hit it. So we say that rivet there. See if I can do that at speed. And precision stroke number three. We're going to be in the inside guard, he's going to cut two. Same thing, I'm going to pick a tiny little target. Those are the three precision strokes. Now we get into the bruising feet. This is one that uh, Highlanders are described doing fairly frequently if they were fighting a kind of not serious sword fight. Why would you fight a not serious sword fight? Well, there's times when you get into a brawl, but it's not really a matter of life or death. For example, Highland drovers would sometimes get into what were essentially gang fights with drovers from the borders. And the drovers from the borders only had cudgels. And so, the Highlanders, out of a sense of fair play, wouldn't use the edges of their swords. They would just smack them with the, the flats and bruise them. That made it an even fight between the broadswords and the cudgels. Uh, if two clans who were not enemies didn't have a feud, they generally got along, but they got into it over something, they might agree to fight it out and only use the flats of their blades. So this is the bruising feat. He goes to cut my leg, and <laughs> just smack him with the flat. Second bruising feet, outside guard. I'm not going for that cut from underneath because I really want to, you know, I really want to send him a message, so I'm smacking him right in the face. And the third bruising feet, inside guard. And lesson 10 of the classic Hakwei of the sword trick lesson is the trickiest of them. It's the whirling feet. This is something we kind of did spontaneously in bouting, and since it involves whirling around, it kind of reminded us of descriptions in the ulcer cycle of warriors doing something called the whirling feet. So this is our whirling feet. We're in the outside guard. He goes for cut one. I parry, grab his wrist, tap up, Turn all the way around, stab him from behind. Remember that one? He 
Is that a really realistic sword technique? Well, we did it spontaneously in bouting, so it can't be totally unrealistic. But it's not really a high percentage move, it's a flash move. And that's what sword tricks are. And that's the Whirling Feet. That concludes the 10 lessons of the level 5 of our core curriculum.